I had hooked maybe four or five fish. The last two really let me down because they felt big and they all came off. And I realized what was going on. I had a bunch of bait up high on the hook and they were pulling that bait down and then that would wad up in the bend of the hook and pop the fish off. So what I did is I totally changed my approach. I wound up a bunch of bait with magic thread and then I just lightly pierced under the thread and under, in the bait. So it was dangling at the bottom of the hook. I threw that out there. As soon as he sucked it up, he was hooked. And put a bunch of wines in one spot where you're gonna put your hook through. Okay, so there's a bunch of wines right there. Boom. Now I'm gonna take my hook and right where all those wines are, we'll just go just under those threads, just through the, the bait a little bit. That's gonna hold it on. And when a fish sucks that up, they're gonna get the hook tip. Boom, and they're gonna stay on too. They're gonna suck that whole thing up. Welcome back to another episode. Today we're gonna do one of those old fashioned, what are they called? Where you like catch a fish and then you cook it. Oh yeah, catch and cook. Oh, there you there go. You we can do one of those. Yeah, we're gonna, if we catch something, hopefully we will. Nine times out of 10, we always catch fish out here. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna do a quick cook up some fish with my magic seasoning. Ooh. Make a few sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. Break down, break it down. What's what? What are they gonna see today? We're gonna first start off rod and reel fishing because the tide, as you can tell behind me, you can see that it's pretty high. It's uh, almost a seven foot tide. Um, we're down here on the at Prisma Point on Vandenberg Air Force Base, um, so it's kind of exclusive, but it's a nice area. Then after as the tide goes out, it's gonna be a minus 1.2 today at about five o'clock. So hopefully around three ish, we can start jumping in the tide pools and start doing some poke pulling pick off some cabazon, some eels, maybe a, a link cod here or two. We'll see. Negative 1.2. It's a negative 1.2 today. So not the yeah. biggest low tide, but it's also gonna happen right as the sun is coming down. So yeah. we'll get a bit of pocket fishing or poke pulling, but uh, like Leroy said, we're gonna do a lot of rod and reel fishing, but in a few hours, it's gonna be hungry time, lunch time. That's it. So and, uh, hopefully these guys catch me something so I can cook it because I didn't bring anything to cook. It's whatever we catch today, we're gonna cook. I bought all the stuff to cook it with, but not to cook. I didn't bring ingredients to cook. Makes so, sense. Yeah, so it's all on you guys. So not only are we here with Papa Leroy Cooks, we are also here with Vince, with Vince Goes Fishing. We're also here with Mimi Fish Fish and her family, Rich and Amy. And of course, we're here with Monica. Yeah. But Leroy's really wanting to see us catch some fish, so let's do yeah. it. I have something pretty special that I'm gonna show you guys right now. It's a big old bag of calamari squid but what's special about the squid after i chopped it up i added some salt to kind of help firm it up a little bit to stay on the hook better that's the goal with the salting process but i also added garlic powder so this bag actually smells really good if you like garlic but let's see they put garlic scent on a lot of different baits the hookup baits power bait for trout why wouldn't it work for rockfish so i sprinkled some seasoning uh, in here. It might be the game changer. Garlic right? powder. Smell it, Eliori. Smell it. Oh yeah, that smells like garlic. Woo! And if we don't catch anything, we can fry these up. <laughs> All right, what I got here is a simple high-low rig. This is a three ounce weight, throwing it on the more than fishing Allen rod, and basically two dropper loops. And at the end are these cheapy, like $2 for like a six pack pre-snelled hooks from any of your tackle store. No need to go expensive because a lot of times when you're doing this kind of fishing, you get stuck and you can lose rigs really easily. So it doesn't make sense to go real expensive, a bunch of terminal tackle, swivels and all that. So just gonna put that garlic squid on there and see if anything wants to eat it. Putting two little pieces on here doesn't need to be big. Big fish eat little baits too. So there it is. Got one near the bottom, one up top. Let's give her a cast. So up here, there's like a clear spot where you don't have any whitewash. And that just shows you that there's a pocket right there. So we'll cast this out. Hopefully stay snag free. We might be crossed. Well, let's let a fish uncross us. All right, we'll see. 
I can't get bit. Fish. Yeah. Oh. Fish, right? Yeah. Got him. That was quick. On that garlic squid. Oh, it's a big bard. Big old bard. <laughs> oh, check it out, guys. Big old bard surf perch. Yeah. Did you bring any jerk baits? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That sounds like a good idea. That's like a nice, a nice 12, 13 inch bard surf perch right there. Nice. He liked that garlic squid. Maybe there's something to that. Do you want them? Sure. All right, Vince wants it. What are we gonna do with these fish for now? Just stick them in my bag? I uh, put them on your stringer, something, yeah, stick it in your bag. That first perch got our hopes really high. We thought the bite was gonna be really hot, but it was about an hour with no bites until this. There's the fish. Little grass bass. First fish of the right species, grass bass. This is exactly what Leroy said he needed. So I was just standing over there and I casted my rod right in front of this ledge and I dragged my bait past the ledge and I ended up seeing a fish come to get it. So I'm gonna stand on the ledge and let my bait sit there right here. Yes, I got a grassy. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Right there. Hey, poke pole just right here. Got him. Sick. There you go. And with this fish, combined with the ones that Mimi and her family caught, we had enough for a catch and cook. Huh? Tell us how bad we suck. Uh, you don't suck that bad. It's just, uh, it's a little rough today. So maybe that's got something to do with the fish not biting as good. But uh, still, you guys came through and caught a couple of nice ones right here. So uh, we're going to fillet these dudes up and eat them. We're gonna make some sandwiches right now. This is my uh, blackening seasoning that I've constructed that we had on the last, well, if you watch Papa Leroy Cooks, I kind of debuted it there on some of that tuna. But today we're gonna be making uh, some rockfish sandwiches. So this is a blackening seasoning, so it doesn't have a lot of salt. So you want to liberally coat it. Just a little bit of canola oil. You don't want a lot, just a little bit. Let's drop them in. We'll give it about a minute on each side and turn it over. 
Look how it's fresh fish, so it just curls up. You smell that wine. Uh, it's a traditional blackening season, and it has a few different secret ingredients in mind, but you know how people always put lemon on fish, right, or seafood. So I took that part away and added the citrus flavor to the aqua blackening seasoning. So it has kind of a really good contrast of kind of a citrus flavor, but it's also a blackening. So it's got all the traditional stuff of blackening season, plus a few extra items that I really can't tell you. It's kind of a secret, but but uh, uh, I've gone through it a couple times and uh, this is what I've come up with. QP mayo is just a Japanese mayonnaise, but it has citrus in the mayonnaise. That's what makes it special. So it's got a little bit of, uh, I wouldn't call it lemon, but it's it's got a citrus citrus flavoring to it. Mayonnaise I grew up with in Japan. So, kind of my favorite. Go ahead and try it, Edward. Yeah. It was a pretty good hike. Pretty good hike to get here. And now we have sustenance. Now we gotta eat. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Yeah. What kind of bread is this? Brioche. Brioche. It's a brioche hamburger bun. Mm-hmm. Now that QP just mmm. What does the QP do? Adds that mmm. Mmm. Right. Mmm. <laughs> And the black new season has a little bit of heat to it. A little bit. Put in secret ingredients. And it's just on a fresh, fresh, fresh foundation of the grass bass. Just caught. It's simple, but so good. Yeah. So it's a chili lime blackening seasoning that Leroy created. And it's pretty funny because what he did was he made six different seasonings, different blends of blackened with garlic. Powdered sriracha was another one. Yeah, powdered sriracha. I tried powdered butter. Powdered butter. I tried a little bit of everything and then uh, narrowed it down to one, which was with, with a number slight, seven. With a slight lime. But then Veronica, my wife, she's like, we want to get incredible like more yeah. more lime more it was like more cowbell more cowbell incredible taste buds that woman has so. yeah we were trying all six of those original flavors that he made and veronica was off is that is that butter is that garlic that's garlic oh that tastes like soy sauce he actually made one that was uh, powdered soy sauce powdered soy sauce with a blackening seasoning the number seven was the one that he decided to make uh first and then then so that's why we're it. we're calling this one 7.2 because it's the second version of number seven which was the chili lime that veronica really liked we've probably gone through like six bottles oh easy easy yeah, yeah. Easy. yeah. if not more leroy's always hooking it up with this <laughs> seasoning man hopefully it'll soon it'll be uh, something that you can purchase we're working on that idea um soon but yeah it just livens up the fish whatever fish you're cooking and uh, you know you can you don't have to just use it on fish you can use it on chicken as well mm -hmm. so it's one of those things that's uh, you know blackening for both you know it doesn't just have to be fish but it works great on fish with the lemon flavor and the, the heat a little bit of heat and all that kind of stuff so and one thing that's really nice about this seasoning is it adds color to your meat mm -hmm. like you could see a piece of meat like chicken or fish and you put a lot of seasoning on it but it just looks bland like if it's just salt and pepper it just looks super bland but something with this it just looks it looks tasty and it is tasty we're gonna finish our sandwiches and then we're gonna get out there tides going out this is gonna be perfect time to poke pole everyone's gonna enjoy some of these sandwiches keep an eye out for papa leroy's 7.2 seasoning yes definitely all right here's a really good example of a ledge you see how this rock is horizontal and you can clearly see that it's like layering there's an overhang over these tunnels like that go way deep in and that's where these monkey face eel are oh i just had one I had a bite too. Oh, I, I, somebody's taking mine right now. 
Got him. Eel. Yeah. Oh, I got him on the side. How in the world? I've never foul hooked an eel in my life. Today's the day. But he's kind of small, so putting him back. Whoa! Nice one. All right, sun's gonna go down. We're gonna head out, but this turned out to be uh, a pretty fun time. Got to catch on rod and reel as the tide was going out. And you guys will see on Vince's channel. I'll leave the link in the description, but he had a really good day today. He ended up catching a nice cabazon, 15 and a half inch. And he ended up catch, actually he ended up with two cabazon, I believe today. And then he also got a couple grassies on his new swim bait hook. So check that out. But thank you guys for joining. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. Thank you guys so much. We'll catch you guys on the next one. If you guys want to see another episode where we came out here and poke pulled, I'll leave a link to the right of your screen. We'll catch you on the next one. Got him, finally. Finally. Oh, this one has been stealing so much bait. It's ridiculous. This one has been the bane of my existence for the last 20 minutes.